How's it going everyone? So the Apple TV actually makes an excellent classic game emulator to run your favorite N64 games or some other iconic classics. In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and run through the entire detail and everything you need to know to be able to do these emulator games on your Apple TV. And no, unfortunately I would not be doing a full tutorial on how to download these ROMs. Uh, due to legal issues, I can't, but keep an eye out in the comment section. I'm sure somebody from the community will give you some pointers. So with the latest generation Apple TV, its specs are pretty impressive. As not only does it have Wi-Fi 6, it has an A15 Bionic processor, that is a five core CPU of 2.9 gigahertz, four gigabytes of RAM, Bluetooth 5, and although this is the entry level model, the 64 gigabyte version, we do not have an ethernet port back here. And unfortunately there's no support for like external drivers, such as like an output IO port for like a USB-C or a USB-A unfortunately. But even with these limitations, this is still a very capable, nice modern day emulator, which is great because we haven't really received anything powerful in terms of the Android TV box side. It's been a while since they released a powerful TV box. The latest one we received was from Google, but that was, wasn't really anything impressive. Which is why the Apple TV is definitely a good little box to definitely check out and see what it can do. So I have this paired to my Xbox Elite controller, but if you have like a PlayStation 5, a Nintendo Switch controller, you'll be able to also navigate your entire Apple TV with just your gaming console controller. And emulators like RetroArch that I have installed right here was can all just be installed from the Apple App Store. So to play your favorite emulator games right now, the best one is RetroArch. It's a free to download app on the App Store on the Apple TV interface. And basically this is how it looks like. Just hit install. And once you do that, if, you go, if we actually go ahead and launch the app, let me show you what this thing can do. Not only does it have a familiar PlayStation 3 or, or PlayStation Portable UI, navigation super easy to navigate and here you can see i have a couple of games installed everything from game boy advance games to n64 even have nnes and i believe you could also install some psps but i don't have those psp roms on hand which is why we just have these but if we launch something like crazy like maybe like banjo kazooie as an example and just tap run select n64 and in just a matter of seconds it loads up and there is audio and the resolution is pretty impressive, especially when you have it paired to like a nice modern day 4K television. So as you see right here, texture and everything is loading pretty fine. It's not stuttering or anything like that, but I have noticed there's small graphical errors every once in a while, but not enough to like ruin the whole gameplay experience. So let's go ahead and select file two because we are rebels. And there we go. We could easily look around it's not much issues whatsoever. Audio is fantastic. Yeah, this works really well. And to demonstrate that we are still using the Apple TV, I'm just gonna tap the home button. There we go, we still are on the Apple TV. Even keep track of our history right there too. And to show you how well it runs with other emulator games, here is Crash Bandicoot. Hit run, select the emulator we are looking for. So Game Boy Advance. And just like that, the game booted up. And yeah, full controller. Although for this game, I am using my controller's D-pad, but that's perfectly fine. It's a Game Boy. It doesn't have joystick inputs. And I could still smash like as Crash Bandicoot can. Now real quick, if you could take two seconds, hit that like button, a like, I'll truly appreciate it because I like to keep my videos sponsor free from any brands like VPNs and such like that, things that we already getting used to seeing a lot more on YouTube. I personally don't like seeing that when I'm watching my videos, which is why all I'm requesting is just a simple like, which allows this channel to be driven by you guys. So thank you to those that hit that like button. But now let me go ahead and show you how to install this. Now adding ROMs, it's really easy. Just enter a URL that the display is showing you either by the numbers or the actual URL link on the bottom. And then you'll find yourself in this page. From here, look for Retro Arc. Open the folder and create a new folder. Name it ROMs to keep everything organized and tidy. From here, you'll have this blank page. Create another folder. Name it of your console of choice, N64, Game Boy Advance. And then once you do that, select your entire ROM library and literally click and drag it onto your browser. And then in no time, everything will just be synchronized and added onto the internal storage of your Apple TV. When you first launch the Arc app, and on this page, once you hit okay with the URL information, stuff like that, 
go ahead and go into the online updater, right? And in order for this to work, you need to go all the way down to update core file information. Just go ahead and select each and every single one of these updates and you'll see like a little green check mark popping up. And now let's back out of here and go into settings real quick in the setting tab. Go in here and look for driver, select a driver and you wanna go ahead and check mark this one right here, XMB. And now just force clo close the app and now relaunch it. And now we have this new UI. So again, just double click the TV icon on the remote. It'll take you to this app switcher and just swipe up to force close the app. But now that we did this, now we need to go into the plus icon and select scan directory in here, select caches. And then you're gonna go ahead and look for that ROM folder that we've selected and select and then scan this. And just go ahead and let it do its thing. And now after doing all that, if we back out all the way, you'll be able to see the contents that we actually scanned. And give it a while, eventually the artwork will automatically load in. So we have our Game Boy Advance games right here. And then we also have our N64 games. And again, the box art to these games just automatically load in and it does a really great job. Now with the retro art, there's a couple of things you need to also do to maintain your ROMs. You see after two to possibly two weeks, your ROMs may be removed, unfortunately. That's one of the cons about the Apple TV, which is why Delta uses iCloud. To give yourself a higher chance not to have your Apple TV just remove all your game saves and stuff like that, you need to go to your Apple TV settings and on the main page right here, scroll down, Till you find apps and then where it says automatically install and not automatically install go down where it says offload unused apps have this turned off this way your retro art app doesn't automatically randomly just get uninstalled in case you stop using it for a while but from here go into screensaver in the screensaver tab go into aerials and make sure where it says download frequency just leave it at never this way it doesn't randomly download stuff because as soon as your storage is full apple is just going to remove some random data that's not really useful for its os so just leave it on never so it doesn't randomly just download a bunch of stuff and clear up space but backing out of here a third party app i recommend downloading is this one down here tv information by launching this will give you real-time data information on how much storage capacity you have on your apple tv so right here you see we're pretty close so having to turn off prevents our retro arc from randomly deleting some unuseful data and files so that this is a cool app that i also recommend again this app is called tv info now when it comes to pairing your controllers it's either for the Xbox, you need to actually hit the pair button up here as well as the Xbox button at the same time. Continue along holding it until it begins pulsing like so. And once you do that on the Apple TV, long hold the TV icon and then go into controller. And then from here, hit controller setting. Now at the very bottom, you should be able to find it as a pop-up, but Ours has already been paired, so it may not pop up, but you simply just hit connect as soon as it's on newly discovered devices. Now, I haven't yet paired this PlayStation 5 controller, so the process is fairly similar. Just instead of the share button, you're long holding this one over here. Continue long holding until the LED light on the PlayStation controller begins pulsing, as it is right now. So the blue LED light is pulsing, and we go back on our Apple TV, here it is, discovered devices connect and now that controller is connected and as you notice it's also controlling our apple tv by just using this controller versus the apple tv remote but other than that there you guys have it that is all the must know settings features and how to properly set up your retro arc to work perfectly on your apple tv again the system isn't perfect so uh, i have seen people horror stories of people losing their complete data after two weeks so just give me a heads up but if it's something like arcade, like old classic game, that doesn't really matter if you lose data and stuff like that. This is still nonetheless a fun way to play some of your favorite emulator games on your existing Apple TV. And now for some Q&A time. If you like to install like your favorite GameCube games or your Xbox games, add time in this video. It's not 
available. There's no app that allows us to do that yet. Maybe by the end of this year, when the next generation version of the Apple TV gets released, maybe there'd be more support for a more powerful Apple TV that could support this. Maybe like an M1 chip Apple TV. I'm sure that's more than enough to run like cool emulators like those ones, Xbox, PlayStation 2, or even uh, the GameCube. So rumor has it, end of this year or the beginning of next year, we should see a new M1 equipped Apple TV that supports Apple intelligence, which requires an M1 chip or the greater. So hopefully pretty soon we'll have those emulators. So other than that, there you guys have it. That is everything you need to know about the latest generation Apple TV and how you could successfully run some classic emulators on that existing platform. If you wish to watch more, maybe watch the whole complete video, cool tips and tricks that the Apple TV can do. I go in greater detail in that video over there. Thank you so much for watching.